try not to concede five goals. I uh, give a give a better message uh, if I could criticise myself, and I always criticise myself. I start with myself. Uh, maybe give too much information, which maybe clouded the players a little bit on the pitch in terms of what we do with the ball, what we do without the ball. So we can work on that a little bit. We worked on that a little bit this morning. Uh, we'll work on it again in the next two days, going into the, the game on Wednesday night, and, and hopefully see a different performance. Did the players give feedback to you from their point of view how they would have done things differently? I've spoken to one or two players around the squad uh, that, whose opinion I value. I had a good chat with a few of them. I had a little chat with a lot of them on the training pitch this morning. Just to try and put one or two things in their head that maybe they didn't do when they went to the pitch that they should have done. Final question from me, Steve. Russia, 10th October 2019, it was a 4-0 defeat. You've spoken about that being a kind of a rock-bottom moment and obviously went a good run after that. It's obviously a really difficult defeat on Friday night against Germany. How, how tricky is it to build back momentum for Scotland in such a quick tournament turnaround time? It's very difficult to gauge because I don't know. You'll find out on Wednesday night. Obviously, we have a... In a way, we're lucky because we have an extra day. We played the first game on the Friday, so we have an extra, ga an extra day to uh, let them clear their heads a little bit yesterday. And now we're working towards the, the game on Wednesday night, so I, I can't really answer that question until we see what happens on Wednesday. Steve, when you look at the qualification campaign, Scotland started really well in terms of not giving away goals, clean sheets. Looks as if we've got away from that. How do you try and get that back? No, we've definitely got away from that. How frustrating is that? How do you get back to, to being so defensively sound? Good information for the coaching staff. Uh, good application for the players. And it sounds really simple to say those two lines, but that's what it is. Are you worried that Scotland have a bit of a soft centre now? Because that's not what we were during the qualification campaign. No, certainly at the start of the qualification campaign, that wasn't the case. Uh, listen, there are, there are no excuses when you lose a game 5-1. And I've been in the game a long time, so when you lose a game 5-1, you have to take all the criticism that comes. You have to respond. The good thing for me is, I've been in this position before. I've always responded pretty well. The players have always responded pretty well. This group of players, I talk about them all the time and how they respond. So that's what we try to do. Do you look back at the last Euros then when Scotland did respond after losing the first game? You go to Wembley and maybe some people had written you off. Do you use that as a, a motivating factor? You know you can do it. Well, we had to go to the second game in the last Euros with a similar idea. We still had an outside chance with the goal difference. This time the goal difference part of it, 3 points, zero goal difference is gone. So that little safety net is gone. We know that. So we have to get four points in the next two games and that's what we have to try and do. Can I just ask you about discipline? Obviously, Ryan Porteous got sent off. We remember that great challenge he made in Cyprus. This time around, it didn't work out in Germany. Do you have to remind him and the team in general about how key discipline is and, and not doing what Ryan did on Friday night? That's been sent off for a couple of years, Ryan. He's, he's been great for us since I, since I gave him his chance in, in Ukraine. He's been great. The challenge in Cyprus, the one you mentioned, was one that was clean. He didn't catch an opponent. The other night, he was... He was trying to stop a clear goal scoring opportunity. Maybe went in, or definitely went in a little bit too hard. Uh, we we're all pleased that Gundogan seems to have no lasting damage. It's something that Ryan will learn. But it was an honest challenge to try and get the ball to try and stop a goal scoring opportunity. So I wouldn't be too hard on him. Steve Ryan aside, um, has the result on Friday night influenced your team selection for Switzerland? You'll find out on Wednesday night. Sorry to revert to one. Sorry to revert to type. Mm. Can we expect to see changes, though? You can expect if you want. Yes, of course you can. Mm. You said that um, you had a, a chat with some of a group of the players. Have you had to individually? Individually, right? Did you feel necessary to lift their mood, or did they do that themselves? Sometimes it's difficult to explain to to people who are not involved in professional football that. They have to be resilient. They have to be resilient because you, it's, it's a game, especially in club football, it's a, it's a game of emotions. So you can have a terrible result on a Saturday and then you've got to be bouncing yourself back. You've got to be ready to go again on a Wednesday night or a Tuesday night if you're unlucky enough to be playing in the Championship. 
because the games come thick and fast. So it's a game of, uh, it's a roller coaster of emotions. It's the same here. They understand they've let everybody down. They're disappointed. But they know they have to be ready and up for the next game because that's the nature of being involved in football. Just following on to that point, actually, Steve, uh, Callum had said yesterday that the most important part about bringing themselves back up again was that they do it together. What, what's, what's your role in that? Kicking a couple of backsides, giving a couple of cuddles, getting them together as a group, making them understand why we had that performance on Friday night and making sure we don't have that performance again. Are you confident that that can be done quickly? Again, we mentioned the fact I'm that always it's... always confident in my players and I'm confident in myself. So, yeah, I'm confident. When you mentioned earlier on about you've taken a wee bit of time, not loads of time, obviously, just to reflect on, on the other night, do you feel confident that you know what went wrong enough that you know how you're going to change it? I could, I could give you a very short yes. I won't. I think I've just touched on it. We, we know what went wrong. Uh, I spoke to the players about what I feel was wrong from my side, what I gave them. I think their interpretation of what we asked them to do was wrong. So we, we've worked on that, we've spoken about that. To be honest, I haven't finished with them because I've got another pre-dinner meeting just to tidy that one up. The post-dinner meeting will be about Switzerland and working into that game. So we, we, we're still just tidying up the loose ends from a really bad night. After the game last night, does that change anything or change your thinking about what you've seen from Switzerland or Hungary? No, I, I think two good, good teams. Obviously, the, the Swiss were excellent in the first half. Uh, the Hungarians came back into the second half. Uh, so we know, we know two tough matches. We'll spend most of the afternoon analysing the, the game and, and working out what we can do to dull the threat of the Swiss and hopefully this time you see Scotland with a little bit more of the ball and creating opportunities at the other end of the pitch. After the game on Friday you told the fans to keep the faith. How easy or hard has it been to keep that faith amongst the staff and amongst the players as well? No, no, we, we believe in ourselves. No, there's there's no, no danger of that. We know it was a bad night. We have to accept all the criticism that comes our way. And then we have to try and put it right. Is that something you've seen in the players and, of course, the staff as well, that it hasn't been damaging? Some people think a result may be damaging and it may really get to the team, but do you feel you're ready to reset? As I said before, there's, to be involved in professional football, you have to be very, very resilient. You have to understand that the blows are going to come, the disappointments are going to come, and then you have to be ready to bounce back. And that's what we have to do on Wednesday night. Last couple, Jane. You said not to be too tough on Ryan Porteous. He will probably be the toughest on himself. How do you manage that? He was one of my cuddles. <laughs> Basically, that's it. He was one of the ones that I speak to, obviously, I explain the situation. It doesn't look good. It's not a good look. Ryan didn't want to make that challenge. He wanted to stop a goal. So you just have a little chat with him. He's, he's, he's very done, it's, it's, as you would expect. But we, we'll, we'll pick him back up. Don't worry. Just finally from me, um, I would assume you'll be watching the England game tonight. Who will you be sporting? I wouldn't think I will be watching the England game, to be honest, because, like I said, I've got a pre-match or a pre-dinner pre meeting and then I've got a post-dinner meeting. So maybe I'll catch the second half. Uh, who are they playing? Serbia. Serbia. I think I'll be supporting Gareth and his boys. Tom? Oh, Alan Kunz from Blick and Zurich. We have seen each other online, if you remember. Of course. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> Great. Um, how impressed have you been by watching the Swiss team, especially in the first half? We were quite impressed. Very good. Uh, probably, if, if you go back to the, the qualifying campaign for the, for the Swiss team, was a little bit of a struggle. They, they, didn't, quite, they didn't quite play as, as, as they can. But I think what people always sort of look at Switzerland and think, well, smaller footballing nation, but they're always there at the, the major tournament, they're always there in the later stages, so when it comes to tournament football a little bit like Germany on Friday night, when it came to tournament competitive football, Germany were on it the same with the, Sw the Swiss team they were on it, they know how to survive in tournaments, they know how to get to the latter stages in tournament and it's a country that, that we can look at and try to emulate in the future 
You didn't want to give any name ahead of uh, the tournament. Now, after I've seen this game, give you, uh, do you give uh, a name for Swiss player that impressed you especially? I think your captain, your leader, is very important to the team. Granit Xhaka is, is very, very important. He's a, he's a key player in the team. He makes the team tick. Not dissimilar to what Tony Cruz does for Germany. So, we, we, Listen, we have big, big respect for all the players. Good team, difficult opponent, and hopefully... We can get things right on Wednesday and, and you go home disappointed and not me. <laughs> Hopefully not. Uh, last question from me. <laughs> you were not expected to be here on, on the stage. Uh, was it your feeling that told you uh, to come? Uh, that no, this is my necessary? job. This is my job. This is not a job for a coach. It's not one of my coaches to come here. This is my job to come today and face, and face the media so that all their questions that they're going to give me are cleared before we go to the Swiss game. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Steve, there was, there was a lot of talk um, leading into this tournament from yourself, from a lot of the players, Andy Roberts particularly on match day minus one, about making history, about becoming the first Scotland team ever to get out of the group. Did you get ahead of yourselves? No, because we can still do it. We can still achieve that. Did then you... at the end of the... Hmm. Whenever our involvement in the tournament finishes, then you can maybe ask that question. And just... Th that would be my opinion, Tom. Okay. And just secondly, um, could you elaborate on the decisions that you, your own decisions that you kind of regret now? I know you, you touched on it. Could you no, give us I any more on that? I think those things have to stay in camp. That's between me and my players and my staff. And some of them got a, a little shove as well. It would Austin McFeely. Especially McFeed. Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, could you tell us what, I mean, what was going on there? Because there's been a lot of comment yeah, about it. It was really that. simple. Uh, obviously, Frustrated, I'm frustrated on the touch, and everybody's frustrated on the touch. You get these moments all the time, but you don't normally see it because we're tucked under a canopy or whatever. And Austin just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time as I turned round after taking a short free kick when we should have been putting the ball to the box as we did when we scored the goal. It wasn't Austin's fault because the players make that decision on the pitch. And we got counter-attacked. And I'm thinking, well, we've lost enough goals, Austin. We don't need to lose any more goals. And then we just had a little discussion about it. That was all.